Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Rob and today we're talking all about using external triggers on the Roland SPD SX Pro. So, what do I mean by an external trigger? Basically, something like this that I'm using here. And what that does is it adds more pads. It adds one more pad to your whatever sampling pad you're using. And in my case, I'm using the uh, Roland SPD SX Pro. So essentially it gives me 10 pads now. It also can control different aspects on the pad like effects and stopping to click and things like that. But we'll talk all about that in this video. So this is not about triggers that you attach to a snare drum or maybe a tom to kind of give you a hybrid acoustic electronic hybrid sound. I'm going to make an, a separate video for that. This is more just about using external triggers and what you can do with them. So let's get started. I'm using the BT-1 by Roland. Uh, as you can see, it's attached here to my floor tom and it's making a hi-hat noise. All right, so you take your lug out here and then that top hole goes above this hole on the rim. And then you just simply uh, screw your lug back in and that's it. So as you can see here, I'm in the back where it says trigger in. You have four inputs there. For some reason, my uh, first uh, trigger input is not working. So I'm using the uh, second one here, the, uh, the three and four. I'm uh, not sure why the first one's not working, but uh, so this video I'll be using the, the second input. Let me show you how I made that hi-hat noise. Go into your menu and you go to pad edit. If you just simply hit the trigger, it will now give you an option to change the sound. So you go in, you can choose any sound you want. And of course, it's just like any other pad where you have layers. You can uh, put it on a loop. You can uh, change all the pitch and everything. So it's the same as if you had an, an extra pad. All right, so let's talk about how I set it up. So basically, you're just using the instrument cable. You're going in to the back here, and then you go into menu, go up to system, go to pad slash trigger in, and now my input mode is trigger times two, and I've messed around, and the head and the rim one works as well. That's for you if you had a trigger like this that was um, attached to your snare drum, and you want a different sound between the head and the rim but I'm gonna make a separate video on those type of triggers. Here you select which type of trigger. Um, I found that these all work, the pads, everything worked there, but um, I'm just gonna use the BT-1 uh, sensory there. So the sensitivity here is really, you know, how much you wanna pick up. If it's lower, it will be, you know, you gotta, get, gotta hit it harder, get a louder sound. Um, that also matters too, if you don't wanna pick it up, when you're hitting your drum. So if it's attached to a drum like mine is, my floor tom, as you can see, it's kind of picking it up. So I messed around with the threshold and I liked it around 15, 16, where it wasn't picking it up. You know, unless I hit it really hard, it's gonna pick it up. But if I just hit the pad or just hit the trigger and then it picks it up and then I can still play my drums and it's not gonna pick it up. All this stuff you can mess around with, but I think really just the threshold and the sensitivity are the most important things. The next thing we wanna do is control setup. So here, this is cool. What you can do here, so I'm in trigger uh, three. I'm in my second input. Like I said, my first two don't work for some reason. So if it's off here, it's gonna make, it's gonna pick up the sound that you applied to it. But you can also give it other commands. So kit number increase just simply tells it to go up to the next kit. Um, and then there's also a kit decrease, which does the opposite, tells it to go down to the next kit. Um, you have set list, that's if you had a set list here, you go to your set list, you click on that, and then you hit it, and it goes up to the next set list. Up, you know, that's helpful if you're playing a live show and you need to quickly move to the next set list. And then again, they have a set list increase and decrease. Click start, obviously it just means a metronome will start when you hit it. Um, then you have a click stop, and then you have a click start stop. Tap tempo is, is convenient, you know, you just get your tempo. Next one, all sound off. Basically it's, it's this button, and if you just hit it, all the sounds will turn off. That can be helpful. So this is a cool function if you have effects designated to um, a certain pad, and you want to turn them off and on, you can do that. That's really convenient, and we all know we have four effects here. Master effect on and off. Uh, this is cool. I like this. 
Uh, I had an idea before I was hitting this uh, pad here and I had a snare delay on it. That's the effect. That's the master effect. And then, you know, you can turn it off and on. So if you're playing like something like And then you can turn it off. You know, just you can be really creative with that. And then obviously I'm just using delay for example, but any effect you want. Um, and then pad sequence reset. I didn't really know what this meant at first, but um, I have a whole video on pad sequence. So basically pad sequence is you're hitting one pad and it's, it's triggering a sequence of other pads around it. So if you're on you know, sequence three, and you want to get back to one, you just hit your trigger, and then it brings you back to the first note of the sequence. All right, so that's what your external trigger can do. I haven't used this a lot, so I think I might start using it pretty much just as like a 10th pad, and I can use it as an external snare or some percussion. Um, maybe it's just my looping pad. Maybe I hit it, and it starts a loop, and then I can hit it off and on. So hopefully this helped. Um, again, I'm going to make a video on how to use the triggers that you attach to the drums. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, you can make a donation to the Rob Ray Music Foundation down in the uh, link below. Just buy me a coffee and give me like a dollar and make me feel like this is all worth it. <laughs> if you have any more questions, please let me know. I'm working on a lot of other videos. I know you guys have a lot of questions on things, so I'm trying to get those all out. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. <laughs>